in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was strong. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 through 22. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If only I could touch his cloak, I would be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take, take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the, man, the woman was healed at that moment. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I just want to let you guys know how red this in the back. An anointing fell upon me while I read this, so I want to tell y'all to be ready. <laughs> I never heard her preach before, but it's, she's anointed. I know that she is, because God touched me as I read it. Our speaker today is Dr. Christina Dungey Stewart. She is a born again, Holy Spirit filled, purpose driven woman of God, ministering to men, women, and children around the world. Dr. Stewart, affectionately known as Dr. B or Pastor B, is assistant pastor of almost 5,000 members of Embassy of Christ Kingdom Ministry. Serving in the ministry since, she, since 1999 under the leadership of Pastor Cedric and Joyce Oliver, she is currently principal of Ambassador Christian Academy, preparing students two years to eighth grade and discovering their purpose for life. Dr. Stewart was first licensed at Christ Baptist Church in 1988 and later ordained by both Christ Baptist First Church of the Brethren Chicago in 1993. She is a product of Gary Schools Corporation, graduated from Emerson, and earned a bachelor's degree from Indiana University Northwest, master's and doctorate degree from past pastoral care and counseling from Chicago Theological Seminary. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Versenia is the recent widow of the love of her life, Deacon Leroy Stewart, the mother of four, and grandchild, grandmother and great-grandmother of 24 children. God uses her, her, her mightily to bring hope, healing, and deliverance to his people. Pastor Virginia Dungey Stewart knows that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm going to say that one more time. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Her desire is to please Jesus with a life of service to God until his return. God bless you.
the world on December 8th weighing one pound, three ounces. This is God's miracle. that they sang uh, by the psalmist Mandisa minister to all of our hearts. And I don't know about you, but the verse that says, have you ever loved one who you thought should still be here? I, I think that we can all park there for just a moment. Have you ever loved someone that you thought still should be here? Amen? Do you know what it feels like to be tangled up in fear? And what if he somehow, talking about God, somehow involved what he's speaking, that he's speaking through it all. Amen? Yeah. God is speaking to us 24-7. Hallelujah. He's speaking 24-7, but the question this morning is, are we listening? Amen? Come on. Are we listening? Amen? Amen? I know a lot of you know, uh, no skip and myself, and, and, and we love you all so much. I, I thank God for this ministry. I walked in here and felt the anointing of God and the spirit of excellence in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I just wanted to say God is doing something. Just get ready. Just get ready. No one ever thought. See, you know, I, 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 I learned the Bible that, you know, we can live for 120 years, amen? And so I, I, I want to clarify some things because I heard some stories out in the community, amen? And some folks, you know, they said that he died doing one thing and somebody else said he died doing something. But see, I want you to hear from the horse's mouth, amen? Hallelujah. Because we're still talking about God, women of God who press, amen? Women of God who push, hallelujah. Woman of God who pray, amen. We're still on the topic this morning because I'm living that, amen. I'm living that. And on that night on January 31st when I was under attack, you know, because see, I, I don't claim sickness. I don't talk about having my diabetes or some blood, having some blood pressure. Because see, I know that that's the name that's under the name of Jesus, amen. He said, every knee shall bow. Even all those will have to bow, amen. But that night, I was under a attack that I'd never been under before. Never before. And some of you know, may not know that Skip had been under attack for about the last seven years. You know, and, and God was ministering, healing to him. But, you know, on that night, when I was under attack and could not breathe, I tried not to wake him up. Amen. And I, I crawled over him and I went down the hallway and I just began to pray. Father, I just thank you. I said, I should live and not die. To proclaim the Lord of the Lord. But you know, there's something that happens in this body, amen? There's a separation, y'all, that's between spirit, soul, Father God, and body. And so when my body was trying to check out of here, my spirit man was still praying the word of God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, fear set in my soul. Amen. I'm going to tell you, your soul will check out on you. Your soul will abandon you if your soul is not filled up. Amen. And so I never called 911 in my life for no reason. But I didn't want to wake him up because I knew the difficulty that he had. So I dialed 911. And, and, and I, all I can remember hearing myself saying, help me. This alone. All of a sudden, Skip comes running out the room like Superman. <laughs> like, da 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 da! What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, I mean, how did he hear me? And he began to minister to me and pray and, you know, try to beat on my back to get me to breathe. And that was the night, the morning of a big storm. February 1st. Amen? And so, like, he called me up one again. He said, where are you? He said, you work around the corner. How come you're not here? And I'm still praying. I shall live and not die to proclaim the works of the Lord. Amen? What do they call me, Caitlin? What's my, what's 
my name. Tell them to say it loud. Grand Diva. Grand Diva. I'm not nah, nah, I'm not Grandma. I'm Grand Diva. And so, being the Grand Diva that I was, and then the paramedics coming in and trying to take me out, I turned to Skip, still holler, can't holler, breathe. I tell him, I said, now don't forget my microphone. I said, don't forget my phone. To the phone to the pastor, so I got the hotline to the pastor. See, everybody had a hotline to the pastor. And I said, and, uh, don't forget my hat. <laughs> that whole time. 
time when I got out of the hospital, I was with my trying to just will myself. And the Holy Spirit said, now you got to get to heaven. You can try to mess the order of things up. <laughs> because I will be trying to say, now Lord, in the word, you said you got many mansions. Now kids, Kim and I just have a little one until you and your return. Amen? He said, no, 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 no. Ain't no marriage. Ain't no marriage going up in the end. He your brother now. I said, oh, no, I don't know if I like that. I don't think I like that. Ain't no incest going on. Ain't no incest going on, all right? <laughs> and then I said, okay, Lord, if I can't, if we can't be married, if I can't be married, then where are people? Where are people? I want to see that list because I know some folks ain't supposed to be on that list. He said, no, we can't let her come right now. <laughs> so I'm here to do a work, hallelujah, for the Lord. Amen. So I just want you to hear God's word miracle in his work. And it's like, this little one here, the, the one that was the preemie baby, she was the only one who had an opportunity to touch him. I have like nine pictures on the camera that, that, that few hours before he died, that she was looking into her his face with a smile, and she knew something that I didn't know, that he was going to go back to see her daddy in heaven. Amen? So let's give God some praise. My brother and co-labor in the ministry, Dr. Marie's wife, uh, Sister Bonnie, First Lady Bonnie. You know, we go back and y'all, I and you got to pay me, you got to pay me and not say some stuff. So. <laughs> y'all, who, 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 who to the highest bill? Who would have done? Who would have done? Who would have done? No, I'm not going to do that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But we started out in the ministry together. Preach my ordination ser service. And, uh, you know, it will only happen if you go. You know, I never forgot it. It will only happen if you, if you go. Back when they had the you go cards. Amen. Praise God. And God is fulfilling his purpose in our lives to transform lives, to set the captives free, and to advance God's kingdom. Amen. And to my sister friend, Bonnie, hallelujah. I thank you and the mighty women of this greenhouse. Give yourself a great round of applause. <laughs> whatever God does first, whatever God does first is significant. And it's no accident. But by God's divine appointment, hallelujah, and his anointment, amen. I said, that's a word I call anointment, okay? Some of y'all need some anointment. <laughs> amen. That he chose me to be your first. Amen. 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 It's also a first for me because I've not taught publicly since my skipper went home to meet with the Lord. And I told First Lady Bonnie that when Pastor White called me, because he called me right after skipper passed, and I'm like, this man just crazy. He's talking about some woman's day in May. This is February, okay? I don't know about all this, you know. Uh, and I graciously said yes, but in the back of my mind, I told Sister Bonnie, I said, I was going to take this to the pastors. I know that Joe said, you just sit your tail down. I ain't telling you to go nowhere. You know? But when I took it to our pastors, Pastor Joe said, oh, praise God. She said, I, I was on that website. You go for it. And bless them. Amen. Yes. So it's by God's divine appointment that I'm here. Yes. And I want, don't want to forget to acknowledge the new beginnings, uh, the ministry, the women here, and the family and friends who are with us this morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings from Pastor Cedric and Joyce Oliver and the members of Embassies of Christ because you know there's something when a pastor releases a pastor to come forth on Sunday. Amen. 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 Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. So give God praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your theme, women who press, push, and pray has resonated in my spirit for several weeks. And as the Holy Spirit began to minister to me, he gave me a formula. Hallelujah. Women who press plus push divided by prayer times praise equal pursuit of purpose. I don't think you heard me this morning. Pursuit of your purpose. Women, we have to press. Amen? 
We have to push. And sometimes things get divided by prayer. But we know that I heard the praises of the wind. The choir here all praise It was a blessing. You blessed it for the day. But the praise of God goes forth. And when the praises go forth, we start entering in. We start pursuing the purpose of God. Amen. Because all of us were called by God. All of us was created by God for a reason. That's right. We were created for his purpose, his workmanship. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The young ladies read Philippians 3 and 14. And I'll read it again. I press on towards, and we know old school, towards the mark, towards the goal, towards the, the uh, attainment, towards the award, towards all that God has for us to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I don't know if you know anything about oppressing. Oppressing takes some exertion, amen? Yeah. Oppressing takes more than just sitting, sitting still, amen? Because right. I, I was looking on YouTube and I, I heard the pastor talk about a, 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 leap, a leap of faith, jumping to faith, amen? And he was telling you that you have to move. You have to get from the place that you are and move into the place that where God wants you to be, to be. Yeah. amen? Yeah. And so oppressing means that it's active. It's active. You, we're moving. We're not sitting. We're not sitting still. Hallelujah. Matthew 9, 20 to 22 said, Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his coat. And she said to herself, If I only touch his coat, I will be healed. What do you need to touch? Hallelujah. What is it that you need to touch in your life right now. Because it may not be healing, but we need a touch from Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And the woman, when she touched him, he said, your faith has healed you. And she was healed immediately. Amen? Yeah. 1 Samuel 1, 10, 11 says, in her bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. Now, I'm not one of those big crybabies. Uh, women. Now, Mama Bear knows probably more about me, and I, I'll tell you later, okay? You don't, don't say nothing, okay? <laughs> but still, I, I'm going to confess my sins. In my school, in my school, we tell the children when they do something wrong, confess your own sins. Right, right. Uh, you know, don't try to tell about somebody else, just confess your own. So I confess my own, but my husband called me Jeremiah at <laughs> the weeping prophetess because I would cry. When they would minister the song, I mean, it just ministered to my very heart and soul. <laughs> You know, sometimes we need those songs that make us be still. Because he says, be still and know that I am God. See, it's in that stillness, in that quietness, in that time that we're with him. That he can minister to those areas in our lives that we don't even know that we need ministering to. Amen? Amen? But he can begin to search us like in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, oh God, not you. You know, search me, O God, and know what my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there's any offensive way in me. Not the person I'm upset with, but in me. And then he says, David says, he says, and then lead me. Lead me in the way everlasting. Amen? Hallelujah. But Hannah said, O oh Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but, but, but I don't have to go any farther. Because right. we know that it's in that passage <laughs> that he gave, she asked him to give her son, amen? amen? But what's the but in your life, amen? amen. What's the but, oh Lord, remember me, don't forget about my situation. What is the but yeah. in your life? Yeah, right. yeah. You know, at my church, I'm known as an acronym queen, amen? All right. And the Holy Spirit doesn't even get to minister to me through acronyms. And so he said that but stands for believing, understanding, and thanking God. Right. No matter what's on the other side of the but, believing. Believing, that means have faith in God, amen? Have faith that whatever the situation is, God got it, amen? Yeah. That he has it. He says in his word that all you are getting get what? Get an understanding, amen? Because sometimes we don't understand his ways. We don't understand why. You know, because we want to ask the why, but she said, but. So what's on the other side of your but? Amen? You know, on the other 
I need. I'm trusting. I'm believing. I understand that your ways are not my ways. Your faults are not my faults. And then he said, all things give thankful. And all things give thanks. People ask me, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great. Because I know who my Redeemer is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel, the verse that I added, Pastor. 2 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. After Hannah gets on the other side of her butt, after her, her, her child is born, and she knows how many of you would have your, think about your first child. Think about your first child that you would, before you even conceive a child, that you would be willing to give your child to God. That's what God did for us when we study Jesus. He was willing to give his only begotten son. Amen? But Hannah, on the other side of it, after she nursed it, I'm sure she sang songs of lullabies. Like I've sung to my kids, I love you to me. Oh yes I do. I love the way you do. The things you do. You know the little songs that we sing that your kids don't know that you can't sing? <laughs> they don't know that you can't sing. They be like grinning and laughing and stuff until they get about three or four years old and be like, Mama, <laughs> don't sing, just preach. <laughs> Let us sing. That's why they was here. Because they knew a thing in the middle about trying to sing. Okay, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all should know that they say Hallelujah. <laughs> Of her butt. In 2 Samuel 2, 1, verse 1 and 2 says, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn. Horn is her disgrace. Because you know the story. You know, when you go back and read in 1 Samuel and how, you know, her husband, he had two wives. Now, men, now you just keep looking at me. This is what I have to say. Keep looking at me because I know you think about having two wives, okay? Yeah. They're having two wives. Now, you already got enough trouble with one. <laughs> but back then, they had two. He had one that was fertile, and she was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm praying, man. I'm praying, man. You're not. You're not. Oh, 
Hallelujah. But give me a job. But heal my cancer ridden body. But give me some money. Hallelujah. You fill in the blank. Amen. And then he made some promise. He said, I'll give you. Hallelujah. I'll give you what you ask for. If you put your focus and your mind on me. Amen. Hannah yeah. was a lot like a lot of us. You know, remember, you know, she had the husband and her, her, uh, his other wife was fertile. And I'm sure she thought, why is my situation like this? Why am I going through this? Why do I have to even put up with this? But after she got beyond that thought, she began to do what a lot of us don't always do, our first response. Our first response should always be to pray. Even when we're in the press, we need to pray, amen? Even when we have to push, amen? All the mothers in the house, raise your hand. Hey, hold on, turn to your husband and slap his head. Hey. <laughs> when you were going through your delivery. Amen. And they were talking about you had the, the push. Hallelujah. And you think about that big head boy you had. Amen. Or it might be that big head girl. Right? And you look at your husband. Amen. And talk about push. Husband, I tell you one thing, you better be praying. Praying that she don't get up off that table and slap you inside your head. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about hallelujah. The press, the push, and the pray. All right. Now, brothers, now when you think about that having that wife, amen, don't think about tipping and dipping with some hole in the street, amen? Oh, yeah, I said it this morning. Amen. I I'm going there this morning. Skip and I, we did most of the, the marriage counseling, and I still do the count, marriage counseling. But I have too many church folks that the wife is coming, or sometimes it's the husband, coming to tell us that the husband or the wife that they've had for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, Just like it was back in the day to have your wife and say, it's my thing. 
I do what I want to do. You know, I, you know, I don't care who I sock it to. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Romans 12, 1 to 3 says, I urge you, brothers. I urge you, sisters. I urge you, teenagers. I urge you, everyone who's accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy and pleasing to God. He said, this is your spiritual act of worship. This is the praise. Amen. Your spiritual act of worship. Hallelujah. When we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, the world can look at the church and say, it's something about you. Gee, it's something about you, Chip. You know, it's something about you. And, and you can point them not to yourself and say, yeah, you know, I, I've been working now. You know, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, I'm on the Jenny Craig and I lost 125 pounds. You know, and, you know I, I, I lift 500 pounds and I can turn over a car. No, it ain't about shit. Because whatever they see, Whatever they see in you, we are to be pointing them to the one who gave us the ability to do whatever it is that we do. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Order of a Sunday. Verse 2 says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, yeah. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Some of you renewed your mind with small deal. Hallelujah. Final episode. Hallelujah. So, Bibles, music. Say we don't have time to read God's word. He said, taste and see. Hallelujah. We're not tasting and seeing what God's word is all about. We gotta eat it like we eat three meals a day. We ain't I'm looking around, ain't none of us look like we miss no meals. Amen. We ain't miss no, no, no natural meals. Amen. But if I were to come down, hallelujah, and ask you, what word, what word do you say? What's the word? What's, what's the word in your heart? What word? All things Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Oh, what word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, when I go to the jail, see, I'll be playing up in the jail. See, I, I mean, see, I already got my offering up. I can give it to me already. So, I mean, so keep the car running. Okay, amen. The skip right here, you always had the car running. Amen. Because, see, we can sit up here every Sunday, every Wednesday, and perpetrate. Yeah, yeah. Fraud, amen. Yeah. And no, no, no disrespect to you, my brother, because I know you got a word. You got a word in your heart. You got a word in your heart. But see, we got to get it from our head, from our heart, to our mouth, out to give it to somebody, amen. You see, when I go up in the jail, see, they're not looking for me to come, amen, and just get, do some little piggy pass. Because see, they're in there, they're locked up, amen. But it's more folks I tell them that's locked up in the church. Hallelujah. Locked up in your own prison. Amen. Whatever that prison might be. So it needs to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so his word have a head in my heart that I might not sin against you, God. Because my heart is deceitful. It'll fool me. This flesh ain't saved, God. You know, 
in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. You may have been pressing through your situation. You may have been pushing through a situation. You may have been praying through a situation. But you got to be praising God in these situations. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it said, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Amen. So you might be part of a pastor's inner sanctum, amen? But there's somebody sitting in the pew that you ain't talked to, amen? person that comes in needs to feel welcome in God's house. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that we may be entertaining angels on the way. They may not look like you. They may not see. I never could do that look. Whatever look. Dance. I, I never could do that little dance. So when, I, when I'm in the jail, this is our only dance. <laughs> Scripture. Turn to Jeremiah 1 and 5. 
Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Because this pressing plus pushing divided by prayer times praise equals the pursuit of our purpose. Amen? See, God ordained you and set you apart. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you have it, say amen. God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you to, as a prophet to the nations. God is no respecter of persons. Each of you, each of us has been chosen by God. Say, I've been chosen by God. Say, I'm God's favorite child. I've been set apart to do a work for him. The question to ask yourself, am I doing the work that God has sent me to do? Some of us have chosen careers, we've chosen places to work and be, and hate getting up in the morning. When we hit the door of our, of our place, we pray that we don't see our boss. <laughs> we hope that. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, it took me up until three years ago to begin to walk in my purpose. Every day, I get up. I'm excited. I'm excited about what I do. Because I understand God's purpose for my life. I understand God's purpose. Now, Pastor shares this one thing. How many of you remember the Beverly Hill Bills? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the Beverly Hill Bills came up, you know, from wherever. I forgot where they came from. You know, from Tennessee? Tennessee. Okay, from Tennessee. You know, poor around here. Yeah. He probably hardly kept his family fed. Okay? You know, we talk about uh, Jen. Amen? Yeah, right. Now, they get to this mansion. Now, remember they lived in a shack. You know, some of us know this. I used to live in 1825 East 19 Court doing another project. So that's why, you know, I, I am the way I am. So I try to be Dr. Stewart sometimes, but, you know, I mean, this, 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 this is just in me. It's part of my DNA, amen? And so they get to this mansion. You see, you know, the thing about when you don't know a purpose of a thing, you know, when you don't know why something is the way it is, you just come up with some old kind of way to use it, baby. And so they get to this mansion and they go into this billiard room and he said, Ee-haw, Ee-haw. This is a fancy eating room. Eat room. Amen? And so they sit down around this table. Amen? And, and, and they take the cue stick and, and they they, they bring the food in there in the billiard room, and they take the cue stick and he says, you know, uh, pass me some of them peas, you know. And they, and they take the pot and they pass the food around this billiard table, amen. Well, that's how some of our lives are, amen. Some of our lives, you know, when, when, uh, the purpose that God has sent you here, you know, some of us are teaching school and just need to go do something else, amen. Some of, some of us, uh, amen. Knowing that when we do 
nothing. Our praises are multiplied. The blessings flow. It becomes an easy thing for us to do. Amen. Because God wants us to fulfill the purpose that he has sent us here to the earth to do. There's some young woman that needs you. But you've been in the wrong spot. Pastor needs a ministry to young mothers. But you're in the wrong spot working with the youth. Needs people to sing on a praise team, but you're ushering. Amen. In the workforce, ask God. It's not too late. It's not too late. Moses was 80 years old. He was 80 years old. Abraham and Sarah, 100, 90 years old. Fulfilling God's purpose. Amen. Ask yourself, am I fulfilling the purpose that God sent me here? I need every eye to close and every head to bow. Because this is serious kingdom business. Amen? I thank God for his sense of humor. But I'm serious about souls. Serious about souls. And I have four invitations this morning. The first one, I want you to ask yourself, is there something that I need to put behind me? Because Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind me, I can press towards the mark of the high call. It doesn't make a difference about your position in the church, in the community, because God wants to get your breakthrough to you today. If that's you, that's you, when I close this invitation, I ask that you come, that I might pray with you. There's another group of people who need to push their way to the altar this morning to increase your faith. Yeah. He said that we have faith as small as a mustard seed. Oh, the the so like that woman with the issue of blood, her faith healed her. There may be some healing that needs to take place in your life. The doctor's given you a bad report. There may be an emotional healing or even spiritual. If you need to push your way, don't hesitate on today. There's someone else here who knows that you know that you know. I, I, my prayer life is not what it's supposed to be. That I need to recommit myself to prayer. I know God called me to intercession, and I just hit the snooze button, and I just don't get up till it's too late. That might be you. And finally, there's someone here saying, "I pressed, Pastor V. I pushed, and I prayed, and I still don't know why." I was born. Why I was placed on this earth. I don't know my purpose. But God wants you to know today. So I ask that you all, that we all stand at this time, and just turn to a neighbor and ask them that if any one of those invitations hit you, I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Because see, I, you know, I, I thought about last night trying to come up with a whoop and a holler and all that. That's not what I do. I'm a teacher preacher. Amen. Yeah. And somebody today has heard something on today that causes you to know that I need a little more of Jesus. Amen. So if that's you, I just ask that you just come. Hallelujah. 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 You can do all things. You can do all things through Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
a reminder of what God has already done through His Son, Jesus Christ. So if you just repeat after me, Father God,